video, we will be talking about this amazing motor driver shield version 2. Keep that in mind. It's version 2, not version 1. Version 1 is very different. So, this will be how to use them and how to program with it. All you can do is just basically mount it on top of your Arduino Uno and you're set. You can, you can drive stepper motors, DC motors, or servo motors. In this regular um, Arduino, we can only drive servo motors. Super useful to have DC motors and stepper motors in your amazing projects. So in this video, we'll be talking about how to program them, how to use them, and some tips and tricks. So all you have to do to start off is just mount it like boom. So basically, that's how all you need to do. Then you can um, use external power supplies, serum power supplies. You can just see all of that in the video. So I hope you enjoy. Please like, share, and subscribe. Also, if you are wondering, right here, this little area, let's bring it closer. This little area right here is just a prototyping board. There's nothing really special about this part. You can just design whatever you want. Then right here is just the PMW pins. Right here is where you can give your um, servo motor an external power supply if you're using a more or less. Then just right here are just some basic components of the circuit, like resistors, diodes, capacitors, for all this stuff. And then you have filter capacitors right here, so they don't make any noise. Then right here are screw block terminals. You can control motor one right here, motor two right here, motor three right here, and motor four right here. Or you can control one stepper motor and two stepper motors. So four DC motors or two stepper motors, as you can see right there. Um, then right here is where you have your, um, whoops, is right here where you have your digital pins. Right here is where you have your five volt ground and your analog. And then right here, this little screw block terminal is where you can do your external power supply. So when we're gonna use an external power supply, what we need to do is we need to take this little yellow jumper off if we're gonna use that or else it won't turn on. But if we're gonna use the Arduino's power getting from another battery, then we just place it right here. And one tip I have is when you wanna make this portable and you don't have these lithium ion batteries everywhere, you can just take a six to, um, or a five to 12 volt battery and don't use nine volts because that won't power the um, driver. Connect the positive to the V in. So the first right here and the negative to right here. Look, it turned on. Right there. If you can see a little bit of the glare. Right there. It turned on. You see? So that's pretty cool. And that is basically how you're gonna use this. Also, one more thing is that when we're gonna use these, these right here in the Arduino itself are interconnected. So that is very useful or else you may have to use soldering iron and it's very annoying. Last thing though, is you see these little um, microchips or microcontrollers or whatever you like to call it right here. So these are to control your DC motors and your stepper motors. So right, right here, I don't know where um, the first one is, but one of them is a H bridge which is a, another type of driver for a DC motor. And then there's some um, other type of driver motors that just basically drive the motors. And I recommend using a six volt battery because that works well with most of DC motors. Unless you have those um, little 1.5 to three volt motors. And that's basically what we're gonna talk about. So let's get right into the program and everything. So right here, I just have a um, one to six volt DC motor. Here are the little outlet. So it doesn't matter which pins you connect it to, but I'm gonna take some a jumper wire and place it on those. Um, some motors require soldering iron to put it on. I'm just placing it on it real quick, just like that. Then next, what we're gonna do is, it doesn't matter which pin you put, but make sure the screw terminals are um, loose a little bit. 
then just place it right inside like that. I'm using M1 and that's important to know which one because that comes in your code. So just like that. Now secu to secure it, we have this little screwdriver and then we just screw it down like that. It's a very easy um, little screw terminal to do. Just um, the screwdriver is very small. So that's basically how you do it. And then we just connect to that. And if you want to use an external power supply, like this one right here, you just put them in right here and remove the jumper. Pretty simple. So that's basically, it's a pretty simple concept. Then if you want to add like a um, ultrasonic distance sensor, you just connect it to its pins right here, here. It's very simple. Next, let's connect a servo motor. Let me grab one really quick. So right here, I have a servo motor. You know, the servo motor is um, a little pin thing. So then what we're gonna do is, you see these little um, pins right here? We're gonna take its yellow one, its signal, and place it towards it on this one. So this one's, the first one right here, is interconnected to pin nine. So when we learn our code, we're gonna put it to pin nine. So let's talk about the program and how we can program this type. And also make sure you don't get confused with the version one because the version one is way different than the version two. So we can actually control a lot of these at the same time. So right here, I have a little stepper motor right here. Then I have this, these pins right here, which I can connect jumper wires to. So well, I'm gonna connect one of them right here. Right there. I'm just gonna connect one of the jumper wires to one of these little um, outlets right here. So right there. Then I'm gonna take the other one and place it right next to that. And that's why there are five outlets for the five pins of the stepper motor. And right here, I just have to unscrew them because they are down. So let me just quickly do that. And you should hear them connecting. And this little um, screw terminal is just for securing them. You don't really um, need to um, put them in, but it's very good to do that. That's why um, when I first got this, I didn't have the screwdriver. So then I just um, used it just like that. I didn't screw it on. Also for your guys' um, DC motor, I can imagine that you're using a, um, a one to 12 motor, um, a six to 12 um, volt motor, but yeah, so to secure this, let's make sure it's not loose. So let's just screw those down. It's nothing too um, difficult to really do in this because you don't need to do soldering iron and sometimes that gets very confusing. So, screw those. Okay, so now we're all done with this. And we can control all these at the same time, but I'd, um, yeah, so let's just do that. And there are a lot of examples on the Arduino, um, uh, the software itself. There are lots of examples that you can follow. Reasons that I prefer the version two motor driver shield than the version one is first of all, it is very integrated. So instead of these giant resistors and these giant capacitors, you have these small resistors and these small field capacitors. So it's very integrated. Also, what I really like about this is you don't have to use soldering iron. 
And for a person like me, you don't want these the toxic part of soldering iron going into my body. So I, I love to just use connections and not all that stuff. And it's just way easier to use because of that. And that is just the main reason I bought this. And also right here is just my Arduino Uno. It can pair with Mega, Uno, whatever. It just has to be the Uno size like that. And right here, this connects to pin nine, but then the other one back there, there's another pin back there. It connects to pin 10, like that. So that's basically um, the little overview of this board. So also one thing, to keep in mind is that these screw terminal blocks are microscopic. They are super duper small. So I'm not sure if you have a one millimeter screwdriver laying around your house, but you need to have a one millimeter to 1.5 millimeter screwdriver to use this. It was very, they're very small. It may look big on camera, but it is actually very, very small. So keep that in mind. So, let's see how we can program this motor. First of all, I want to show you, because this is how I started, and I've been going really good with these types of motors. So, what you're going to do is you want to go to Examples, just like that, from Libraries. Then, we're going to go to this one, press it, and then we're going to go to all of these. You'll you just press it, and then you see all these. Then I'm going to go to DC Motor Test. Then I'm just going to copy and paste it to my sketchbook so I can make changes and stuff. So let's quickly just do that. So here's a sketch. Basically, how we're going to do this is a couple of steps that we need to do. First, we need to add a two of libraries. Wire.h and add a fruit underscore motor sh motor shield dot h and this is for version two as you saw in that example where is it so from the example as you can see it was from the version two it's just a motor shield version two library then after that you'll need the add a fruit motor shield version two which is called eat a fruit underscore motorshield.h so those are the two libraries that you will need next we want to like create an object for the motor shield itself or else our arduino will not know it, it's there so we just use this little thing right here to give it its name so then add a fruit underscore motor shield afms is equal to afms stands for add a fruit motor shield equal to add from motor shield Basic, simple. Then right here is where we defined our motors. So as I said earlier, you have to know what pin you um, screwed to it. So in this case, if you did pin one, like this, you can see right here, like that, you can just do pin one. So how you're gonna do this, add fruit underscore DC motor, then you have this little um, asterisk, and then give it a name. I'm gonna we give it my motor, and this equals Add a fruit motor shield afms dot get motor parentheses and then the number. Excuse me. Then that's before your void setup. In your void in your void setup, and just in this case, we're using the serial print. We have nine six hundred. All this void setup is just your um, imagination, not imagination, but your just everything that you can build. So this is where your you can just do anything you want in the void loop. And everything. But for a void setup, you have to do a couple of things. So, we do afms.begin. This starts 
with um, your DC motor, it starts with everything. Then right here in these parentheses, we're going to do how many bods you need to start. So right here, you can just read off of this. There are lots of different details right here. After that, we have to turn on our motor and give it a set speed because we don't want it going super, super fast and then it exploding. So we're going to do is it's out of 255, so it's 0 to 255. Choose anywhere between there. 255 is the highest um, max speed it can go, as you can see right there. So we do this. We put the dot. We put a little dash like this. You can see just like that. Just a dash and then that little, um, this thing. Or, oops, this thing. So we go like that, and then we do set speed, shift or orange, parentheses, whatever you know. Then we're going to turn it on. So we do motor run forward and then release. It just goes boop, boop, done. So after avoid loop, that's where you can do anything you want. This is just, um, but yeah, this is just what it's the thing, like serial print, everything. So then let's talk about a couple of things. So right here, we have these two little things that we have to use a lot if we're going to use them. My motor, the little um, thing right here run backward this just makes the motor backward since we have our adafruit adafruit how do you say it it's um library right here it already knows what that means forward and backwards you can't do right or left but what you could do is let's go to my sketchbook real quick and let's go to my obstacle avoiding car what you can do though is you can tell your arduino what is turning right and what is turning left This is the slowest Arduino I've ever had. Anyways, let's just type it in. So, we want our thing, so this is just a part from this little code. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a void. So we're gonna do void, and then we're gonna go turn right. So let's just gonna turn right, boom, boom, oops, boom. And then, go like that. That. Then, after we're going to do that, we give it what it's going to do. So to turn right on these motors, just using some of the logic you have, um, what we can do is we can go my motor, my motor, its name, this little thing, run, and turning right. So what we're going to do is we want the left wheels to turn backward. Sorry, we want the right wheels to turn backwards and the left wheels to turn forward. So my motor dot run, this would be, let's say we had two motors to make it turn right. So then the other motor would be my motor one, maybe. So then my motor dot run, then this one's gonna be forward. It has to be all caps. Like that. And then my motor, this is just this name, my motor, I just gave it this name, it's not going to be in this code, you can't really verify it because it's a little bit different, that, run, backward, and this little motion will make it turn right, but then we can also do the vice versa to make it turn left, so that is basically how we're going to program with this cool Arduino motor.